Hey everyone, but all of those games where you feel like you don't have a jungler and it's impossible to win lane as you keep getting ganked. Learning to play around the jungler and recover after getting ganked is an important part of the game and will really help you climb. So today I'm going to break down a lane phase where my jungler literally isn't there and DC'd before they were done their camps, and I die to a jungle gank but still smash my lane. I'm playing Syndra vs Karma and Gold, but the concepts will apply to almost any champion. So let's get into it. At the start of the lane, the first thing I do is use a Q on Karma when she walks into range. This is for two reasons. First, you don't want to sit at full mana. This is just a waste of mana regeneration, so at the start of the lane, you should always throw one ability out pretty quickly. The second reason is I want to start pushing, so I wanted Karma to be on top of her wave when I use the Q. Pushing is how you win most lanes and it puts pressure, especially in low elo. So if I can harass and push with one ability, that's maximum efficiency. After that, I make sure to focus on my own last hits and try to hit Karma again when she walks up. I want to be looking for these Qs when she goes for her last hit, so this one was a little early as the minions weren't that low yet, and that's why I missed. Now, this next Q, she isn't going for CS, but she's way too far up and not moving properly. She needs to be wiggling back and forth to try to bait out my abilities, but she just walks up and stands still, so I take the free Q. Something a lot of people don't understand about skill shots is, if you just put your mouse on them, it will land if they have bad movement. If you watch it again, notice I didn't lead or overthink it. I just put my mouse on her. After this, when she's walking up for last hit, I hit her with a Q and an auto attack. This would normally be bad because she has three range minions up, but because I have such a big health advantage right now, I can afford to take a suboptimal trade. Then I use phase rush to cut away a bit and go back in when my Q is up. This is only because I know my Q will kill at least two of these minions. If not, this would be a hard griefing trade and I would just lose. Four minions is no joke in these early levels. Now the next wave is here and both waves are even in the middle. I know I'm one minion off from level two, which could be a kill chance here with how low she is. So watch how I am auto attacking one minion and positioning so that I'm ready to go in as soon as I hit two. And on top of this, Karma is playing extra scared and isn't trying to kill any minions to potentially hit two before me. But as that minion gets low, I run up and hit Karma with a Q and this is to prepare for my level two all in. I know my Q is only a four second cooldown. So if I can get some poke in, then hit two, level up my E and stun and Q again, I should be able to kill her. Sadly, as I walk up to do my combo, Karma also hit 2. So far, the only reason Karma has survived this long is because her Q actually does way more damage to the wave than I thought. She's been keeping up with my push, just throwing Q at the wave over and over. But if I went in there, she could easily turn it on me and kill me, so I just backed off instead. If she roots me in her minion wave, it would be too much damage. But she runs at me like this, so now I can use the stun with the ball on the floor and hit her with a Q and an auto attack. This way I don't get rooted inside of her wave and I'm completely safe. But if I have Electrocute there, she probably just dies. But I have Phase Rush, so I just back off and she flashes away anyways. Now that I got her flash, I need to be careful of what she does next. She has TP while I have Ignite, and the wave is pushing to her. If she TPs back in here, I could be in trouble. She'll have full health and mana. So I'm going to push until I see her again, which lets me know I'm safe from her TP. If she did TP back in, I would just focus on clearing the wave and getting level 3 first. And if I did that, there would be no way she could kill me. But now I'm just looking for more harass since I have the minion advantage, but she uses her alt and W here. I should have stunned her and pushed her out of W range, but I was afraid I was getting ganked because it was an odd time for her to go in. And if I'm getting ganked, I need to be able to stun the Hecarim. If I stun Hecarim, he can't kill me. But now I'm focusing on getting the wave cleared and pushed in so I can reset, but she's standing right behind a ball, so I stun and combo her. But I wasn't in range to ignite, so I back off, and that's actually why I don't like running ignite on Syndra. I almost get the kill though, using phase rush to dodge her Q and weave in and out of tower range, but I couldn't get into range to ignite of course, so she lives. Now I should have 100% reset here with the wave crashed, it's completely trolling to stay. But I'm in low elo, so I overstay my welcome all the time, and this time it gets me run over by the horse. The important thing here is that I didn't flash. When you're getting ganked, you have to know when you're dead and don't waste flash. Just accept the death because the summoners might save you if you get repeat ganked, or make you win the 1v1 when you get back to lane. But how am I going to recover? Well, I'm going to keep doing the exact same things, and that's the important thing here. So I'm going to clear the wave on the tower first. Then I'm going to only last hit. This is very important. This is because she just pushed the wave in mid and reset when I got back. So if I start pushing, she would get back in time to catch the entire wave on the tower, especially with it being a cannon wave. So if I just last hit, I can deny a few minions before she gets back. And from doing that, she lost three melee minions, which is pretty good. She actually almost lost the cannon. But now I have a pretty big minion wave with me, which means I can be aggressive here. And that's how laning works really. If you have a big wave and you're not insanely behind, you can be very aggressive. I go for a Q and miss, but I had full mana, so I wanted to get my mana regen going. 
but now I'm going to use Q on the minions here to set up a combo ahead of time. So I know if I clear these, I will have a huge minion advantage and she will have nothing to help her fight. So if I put a ball down and use that to stun, she won't see it coming and I can follow up with my W and Q for free knowing it will land. So as she walks up, I use E, which clears most of the CS, stuns her, and lets me go in for a huge chunk of damage as expected. She runs to tower, then turns to me and uses her alt W, but since that heals from missing health, and because my wave is hitting her the entire time, I'm going to win the trade hard. Sadly, I get rooted on the very edge of tower range, which evens out the trade a bit. Karma's still being aggressive though, and this is where she makes a big misplay. She uses her E here when I'm not using anything yet. When you're going against champions with shields, or if you're playing one with a shield, you always want to wait out the shield before doing damage, or if you're the one with the shield, you want to make sure you're using it to actually shield some damage. It sounds obvious, but in low elo, you guys never do this, and you just waste your damage or waste your shield. So I'm going to wait out the shield, and she hits me with a Q while I'm waiting. I'm not going to panic though, because I know she just used W and Q, her only damage abilities, and can only kill me with auto attacks now. With this much health, I can eat 2 autos at least, and I have a cookie, so that would make it 3 or 4. I'm holding my W, my Q is up, and my E is coming up in 2 seconds. So I know if I land my abilities, I will have the damage over her, especially with Ignite and this huge minion wave. So I keep fighting, making sure to auto constantly, then slow her and Ignite, then Q and E to stun and auto to finish her off for the kill. Remember, it was only this close because I was rooted under tower like a scrub, but with this huge minion wave, she never stood a chance fighting me. Minions are way too OP this early, and I'm sure some of you are thinking, what if you got ganked by Heck again? Well, I would keep doing the same thing and keep trying to track him, but even if you are getting ganked, you still want to be pressuring. You don't want to just concede your lane. Obviously, you want to avoid dying to the enemy jungler, but learning to survive ganks is really important. If my stun is up, Hecarim can never kill me until level 6. But now Karma is extra screwed since she died to me before level 6, and I crashed the way before resetting so it's going to push back to me. Now I can basically zone her off CS, and if I can chunk her a bit, I can easily kill. But she has a big minion wave, and like I said, that's super important in laning. So the first thing I do is trim this wave down with my Q. Not only am I thinning it, but I'm setting up a stun combo like I did before. So I focus on grabbing some last hits after I trimmed it, then when she walks up I look for a stun and sadly miss, but land a W and Q for some poke. I now only need to get her to about 60% to all in. Also notice I made sure to not get the wave pushing back to her. I killed just enough minions to thin it, but make sure it's still pushing to me. I only want to do this for a little bit because like I said before, mainly I want to be pushing and pressuring, but sometimes good chances to freeze arrive, which makes them have to make a decision. Does she overstay and try to crash the wave? or just back off and miss CS. Anyways, when she walks up to last hit these minions, I hit her with another Q which brings her into kill range. So as soon as my stun is up, she's dead if I land it with my ball combo. But since my Tristana ADC is here to gank for whatever reason, I just bait by walking at her and letting her W me, which makes her want to stay close to me, then run back to pull her away from her tower, and because she didn't have flash from earlier, it's just a free kill. But to be honest, she was dead 5 seconds from then anyways. The way was in a terrible spot for her, she didn't have flash, and she had no way to crash it or fix it, so the lane was doomed. Even if I don't kill her, she zoned off a ton of CS. She needed to not die before level 6, and she didn't rush any MR, so she's just a free kill. But as you can see guys, even if you die early on, the lane isn't over, and you pretty much play the same as if you didn't die. You still want to pressure and follow the standard concepts and rules to your trades. I had a huge minion wave when I got back, and I used it to bully her despite taking tower shots. By the way, you should know where our guides come from. Our hyper improvement platform skill capped is the number one place to actually start improving at League of Legends. You can input your rank before signing up to see where we'll think you'll climb to. Then if you don't hit that rank while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. We offer this because our services really do work. And if it doesn't, then you shouldn't pay for it. Check us out right after this. But that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.